Uh, you're going to love him, he's going to be fantastic. So please give him a very warm welcome. Whoop, cheer and stream and welcome the wonderful Ali Sharuki. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. You having a nice evening? Yeah. 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 Do you enjoy the dancing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like the coalition government? No. <laughs> no. It's a trick question. Because everyone I talk to at the moment seems a bit pissed off about the cuts, but we need to maintain some perspective too. My mother always used to say to me, Ali, there are always people worse off than you, you know. There are children in Africa without iPods. <laughs> And I bet that's not even true. <laughs> Call me cynical, but I think some people do charity work just because it looks good on their CV. Take Bono, the lead singer of U2. He first went into human rights campaigning during his gap year after school, mainly because he failed his geography a <laughs> But he has redeemed himself a bit now, though, because last year he was awarded an honorary doctorate in woodwork from the University of Loughborough. <laughs> Did you know that about 10 years ago, Bono was given the keys to the city of Dublin, but he got so paranoid that he was going to lose them that he got a spare set done. <laughs> so now his cleaners got the freedom of the city as well. <laughs> of course, everyone's leaving Dublin now because of the financial crisis. Bono's got the keys. So basically, he's house-sitting until everyone gets back. <laughs> That's a lot of plants to water. It's a lot of cats to feed. It's a lot of women's underwear to try on. <laughs> of course, it's not just Ireland that's feeling the pinch. Did you know that harsh public sector cuts in Spain mean that apprentice matadors are now going to have to learn on the job? <laughs> and things have got so bad in Greece that some Greeks are actually considering the extremely radical measure of paying their taxes. <laughs> and cuts are hitting the English education system hard too. Not only has university funding been slashed by about 75%, but now children are being humiliated into having egg or spoon races on school sports days. <laughs> Seems as if everyone is making sacrifices at the moment. Prince Andrew is giving up massages. <laughs> Colonel Gaddafi is giving up Tripoli. <laughs> and Nick Clegg is giving up <laughs> but how often do men make <laughs> But how often do men make sacrifices voluntarily? There's Gandhi, I suppose, who spent his adult life in celibacy and a day each week in silence, not to meditate, but because the cricket was on the table. <laughs> There's Jesus Christ, who wandered alone in the wilderness, hungry and disoriented for forty days, and on the fortieth day the devil cruelly taunted him, if truly you are the Son of God then you'd be able to turn this stone here into an iPhone 4 <laughs> and download a really useful navigation app. <laughs> and Jesus was tempted, because the iPhone 4's got some really good games on it as well. <laughs> well, there's the Cliff Richard, perhaps, though Mistletoe and Wine remains one of the most lucrative Christmas songs of all time, which is hard to understand, because the B-side wrote Hypnot and Wine <laughs> had a much catchier tune. <laughs> We love technology and gadgets and owning stuff, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying that if you've got a really small penis, <laughs> that you don't need a fast car, because you do. <laughs> you've got to have something going for you, haven't you? I've got an electric smart car, by the way. <laughs> Not to 40 in over three minutes. <laughs> I decided to try online dating recently. I thought I'd buy my groceries online, CDs, DVDs, and everyone knows that women are just objects too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit like Amazon, except you're shopping for women instead of books. So maybe they should have features like people who dated sexy Shazza 78 also dated Geordie last 72. <laughs> <laughs> or they could introduce a rating system so you can check out the sexual condition of your prospective date. <laughs> New. Used. Used. <laughs> Put in good condition. And everything else under the very broad but very honest category, well fingered. <laughs> on these 
these websites lie about everything, their age, their occupation, even their height. I mean, how fucking stupid is that? <laughs> My advice to you is to watch out for excessively high heels, or just to take a tape measure on your first date. <laughs> and to take issue with any discrepancy in excess of one inch. You should also watch out for things like upturned milk crates that they might be standing on, <laughs> under long flowing dresses. These women can be very devious. <laughs> But the way we relate to each other using this stuff is all wrong. I got mugged about four weeks ago, so I changed my Facebook status to Ali's been mugged. Two days later, I log on and I see a message saying, two of your friends like this. And one joker has simply written, laugh out loud. Thank you. <laughs> but messages used to be filled with suspense and intrigue, and men would go to extraordinary lengths to deliver them. Take Pheidippides, the Athenian herald, who ran 25 miles in one day, after running 150 miles the two days before, and who then dropped dead on the spot, despite getting one of those tinfoil blankets at the end, <laughs> and getting a deep tissue massage, in order to proclaim to the Athenians the great news of the Persians' unexpected defeat at Marathon, not to deliver some inane message scribbled hastily on a post-it note. Oi, Athens! How are you? We are great. Hope you have a good day. Love, Sparta. <laughs> the Greeks invented philosophy, of course. I spend a lot of my time asking myself philosophical questions. I mean, if all change is an illusion, as many philosophers say it is, then how come the 99p shop is doing so well? <laughs> Did you know that scientists now believe that only human beings, apart from Dan Brown, possess the capacity to use language. <laughs> but I was in Waterstones the other day and I noticed that it had a whole section of books on Pigeon English, and Pigeon French, and Pigeon Spanish, and Pigeon Portuguese, and even Pigeon Mandarin. Apparently Pigeons speak all the same languages that you and <laughs> Only they speak them all quite bad. <laughs> Before I go, let me leave you with one last scientific fact. You've probably all heard before that if you leave a monkey alone with a typewriter for an infinite period of time, then eventually it will produce the complete works of Shakespeare. But did you know that somewhere between the second and the third week, the monkey will produce, word for word, a complete typescript of the Da Vinci Code? <laughs> but then refuse to publish it, in order to preserve his own artistic integrity. Sadly, no one knows how long Dan Brown needs to be left alone with a typewriter before he manages to get beyond complete and utter gibberish. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Ali Shurubi.